Well, good evening, everyone. It kind of went silent a moment or two ago, so I assume that means everybody's ready to, to start. Um, can I welcome you this evening to our carol service here at Gilnahirk Baptist? It's just great that we can actually have a carol service this year after the, la the, the, year that, the years that we've really had the last couple. Um, it's great to have um, so many of you here with us this evening as we come to celebrate the birth of our, our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's what we're going to do tonight. We're going to sing some carols. We're going to hear some readings. Um, Drew's going to bring us a um, message from God's word later on and we're going to be sung to as well and it's great just that we were able to come and gather and celebrate Jesus in this way. Um, just before we start um, I'm going to be very formal just a couple of wee reminders because I know we've got some visitors with us this evening and it is brilliant to have you with us um, just as is our protocol in, in our services um, you can keep your mask on um, as much as you want um, definitely when singing um, but if uh, after a while you need to take it off if you feel comfortable to you can and um, but definitely when singing that's really it and then moving about um, at the end of the service and the service itself is going to flow through um, hopefully pretty seamlessly um, will be led by the screens and um, there'll be it'll prompt you when to stand for carols and everybody else roughly knows when they're going to be taking part um, majority of like the readings and stuff are going to all be up on the screen as well and um, so there'll not be too many people moving about as we go through the service but we're going to start um, our service with a reading, first of all, and then James is going to come and introduce our first carol. He's going to sing a chorus, and then we're going to stand and sing a great hymn on Carol of Christmas, O Come, All Ye Faithful. Um, so we're going to run the first reading now, and then James is going to come up and sing. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwelt in a land of deep darkness, on them a light has shone. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and of peace there will be no end on the throne of David and over his kingdom, to establish it and to uphold it with justice and with righteousness, from this time forth and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this.
Let's turn to God in prayer. Father, you know our hearts this evening. We desire that we would indeed come at this Christmas time to see your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Not just a baby in a manger, but one who is wonderful. The wonderful counselor. The one who is in himself almighty God. The one who cares as an everlasting father. And the one who is the prince of peace. Father, we thank you that he is the one who is real peace that we need day by day, and especially peace with you. We thank you, Father, for his mighty power and his godliness. We thank you, Father, for his counsel. Father, we pray that this evening as we contemplate your son, as we think of that day when he was born here on earth, having come from heaven, we pray, Father, that you will speak to us through your word. Make your word live to us. We ask for the help of your Holy Spirit to speak to our hearts, even as we read your word, that we might hear you speak to us this Christmas time. In the busyness of all that's going on, Father, we pray that tonight, in the quietness, and in this time of fellowship together, we might see him. We ask this, Father, in the name of your precious Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. We ask this that he might be glorified in you. Amen. We're now going to have the readings from the New Testament that continue on from the prophecies that were made in Isaiah that we've already read. 600 years later, we see the fulfillment of those prophecies. Let's hear as God would speak to us through his word. The birth of Jesus foretold. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favoured, the Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favour with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be? Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin. The angel answered, The Holy Spirit will come on you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age, and she who is said to be unable to conceive is in her sixth month. For no word from God will ever fail. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May your word to me be fulfilled. Then the angel left her. The birth of Jesus Christ, Matthew chapter 1, verses 18 to 24. This is how the birth of Jesus Christ came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph, but before they came together she was found to be with child through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph her husband was a righteous man and did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, 
and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will be with child and will give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him and took Mary home as his wife. But he had no union with her until she gave birth to a son, and he gave him the name Jesus. One thing we notice in both of those readings is the instruction from the angels, do not be afraid. We will hear it again from, for the shepherds later in the story. Even though the news that the angels brought may have sounded daunting, Mary, Joseph, the shepherds, and indeed all of us, do not need to fear. Because this story is about the God who comes to us, and this God is always worthy of our trust. months go by uh, for Mary and Joseph and as time approaches for the baby to be born 
they're uprooted from their home. And, and it seems that something has interrupted God's plan. But no, this wasn't an interruption. This was always the way it was meant to be. See, in another prophecy in the book of Micah, we read God speaking these words to his people. But you, Bethlehem Ephrathah, though you are small among the clans of Judah, out of you will come for me one who will be ruler over Israel. And so Mary and Joseph have to make their way to Bethlehem to take part in a census. And they go there as the special city, as David's city. And so let's join together to sing Once in Royal David's City. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that the census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria, and everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph also went up to the town of Nazareth in Galilee, to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and the line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, time came for the baby to be born and she gave birth to her firstborn a son she wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger because there was no room available for them it's not the most orthodox of birth stories but this is how jesus god's son entered the world let us sing together of the wonderful night when jesus christ was born
God's word continues to show us what happened next that night. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over all their flocks at night. An angel from the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause joy for the people. Because today in the town of David, a saviour has been born. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly a great company of the heavenly host appeared to the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven. And on earth peace to those whom his favour rests. When the angel had left them and gone to heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and to see this thing that has happened, which the Lord's told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. And when they'd seen them, they spread the word concerning what had been told um, to them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all of these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. What a wonderful time we've had already this evening, thinking about the, uh, in the incredible encounter of Jesus, God's Son, entering time and space and history, God with us, Emmanuel coming in humble circumstances to humble parents, yet as we've said many times through this Advent season, coming as our humble king. Uh, And this year throughout our Advent season, we've been reflecting on this great verse from John 1, 9, where we read the true light, which gives light to everyone, was coming into the world. Uh, And we've been enjoying that truth, that truth of Jesus as the true light, that true light that came into the world. Uh, And this evening already, we've been reflecting on that great reality that God came to live with his creation. Uh, Just in case you've missed it, we've been singing these words, Come and behold him, born the king of angels. He came down from earth to, uh, to earth from heaven, who is God and Lord of all. Radiant beams from thy holy face with the dawn of redeeming grace. Jesus, Lord, at thy birth. In just a few minutes, we'll sing, Hark the herald angels sing, Glory to the newborn king. This is the glorious story, the most glorious story. Uh, And what a pleasure it is to remember and reflect on it with us all uh, this evening. Jesus, the true light, who gives light to everyone, was coming into the world. I wonder how that verse makes you feel. I, I wonder how this carol service has made you feel. I wonder how Christmas time makes you feel. Um, now, I'm, I'm not suggesting or, uh, or offering that we should live our lives based solely on the impulse of our emotions. Uh, let's face it, they change on a whim. Uh, and if we were to, they may take us into paths that would end up being pretty unhelpful. Uh, but there's no doubt that as we reflect on the Christmas story, as we see in God's word, then we should feel something. In fact, that doesn't even really seem to do it justice because so much of what we've seen tonight and as we read through the nativity passages at the start of the gospel accounts is that it's a deeper thing than emotion that is being offered. It's a complete change of being that is being offered and what is being offered is joy. We're thinking about that during the service this morning when we thought about the Magi. And we talked about Matthew 2, verse 10 in the ESV, which reads, When they saw the star, they rejoiced exceedingly with great joy. I mean, I'm not sure we get this very much in Northern Ireland. Uh, We're not good at showing that level of joy or emotion unless it's at a sporting event, possibly. Um, But there's something excitedly uh, boiling over from the Magi. And indeed, we see it in many other occasions throughout. It's, It's a lot of joy on display. And the joy is because this is the birth of a new baby king. And this king is a special king. This is God with us, Emmanuel. And he brings, and the news of his birth brings, joy. We know this too from the reading that we've just heard from Kat in Luke 2, uh, 8 to 20. We see that on the night 
as the night went on for the shepherds, they eventually came to know that joy. Um, Now, it wasn't the case the whole night. Let's just take a flick through some of these verses and you'll see how that night progressed. In verse 9, when the angels appeared to them, the glory of the Lord shone around them and they were terrified. That's not joy, that's terror. But the angel said to them, do not be afraid, as we've had so beautifully sung with us as well. The story goes on, verse 15 and 16 of Luke 2. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let's go, let's go to Bethlehem and see that this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. And then verse 16 simply says, so they hurried off. There's a wonderful sense of anticipation and urgency. Dare I say, it's the beginnings of joy. Verse 17 and 18, when they had seen him, They had seen this baby in a manger, God with us, Emmanuel. When they'd seen him, they spread the word concerning him and concerning what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. Now we're getting this picture of overflowing excitement. In verse 20, the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. And so we have worship. So the night that began with terrified ends with worship. And what happened in between that brought about that transformation? Well, they met Jesus. They saw the true light that was coming. And therefore they knew joy. Joy is the overarching characteristic, I think. It's joy that the angel promises will be the result of that news. I'm sure you picked that up in Luke 2, 10. I I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Therefore, it's joy that propels these shepherds from the fields into the town. It's, It's joy that sends them onto the street to tell everyone about what they'd seen and heard. It's joy that fuels their glorifying and worshiping God. This is a story of joy. Christmas, indeed, is all about joy. Now, as I've said, and as many of us know from personal experience, this type of joy that we're talking about here goes deeper than an emotion that we feel. It's a state of being, if I can put it like that. You see, it's possible to have this level of joy even in the midst of difficulty and pain. It's possible to have this level of joy when things are bright and breezy. So what... What is this joy? And and specifically for this evening, why does this news that the angel brought, why is it going to cause great joy for all the people? Well, the angel goes on to explain why this news is so good. In verse 11, we read, Today in the town of David, a savior has been born for you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. That's the news that's causing and going to cause great joy. This news about a baby is about a baby who's been born. And news of a baby being born is always good news. But what makes this such good news is who this baby is. He is the the Savior, the Messiah, the Lord. And we maybe don't hear those words too often in our day-to-day lives. But but they are important words. They, They show us who this baby is and they show us what he came to do. We're told that he's the savior who's been born and we need a savior. We need a rescuer because we find ourselves, all of us, every single one of us find ourselves separated from God because of our sin. God, the the creator of the universe, the the author and the, the very perfect nature of love and joy. But we find ourselves separated from him because of our sin, which we all have. And we might try, but we can never work our way back to him. We can't claw our way back. We can't, uh, try to be good enough to work our way back to him? No. We can't be good enough to impress him because our sin is always in the way. And we can't rid ourselves of that sin on our own, but yet we need it to be removed. If we want to enjoy presence with him, we need something or someone to deal with that sin. And through the Bible, God promised that he would make the way possible for that sin to be removed. And he would do so by sending the Messiah the savior, the rescuer, and he would take the penalty of our sin for us. That's why Jesus came. That's why this is the real good news, not just of Christmas, but of all time and every time. Jesus, God's son, came into the world that he created 
so that he could live a life to show us what it would mean to live in relationship with God. But also he came to live and ultimately to die and therefore taking the penalty of my sin and yours. And because he did that, then I can ask him to forgive me of my sin. I can trust in what he has done for me by dying on the cross and rising to life again. And all of that means that I don't then stay separated from God. No, I am welcomed in to friendship and relationship with the Father eternal. And this is really good news. And this is not just good news for now, that I get to live my life with him now for however long I'm given on this earth, but it's good news for all eternity that I get to be with him, my Savior, my Messiah, my Lord. So this is good news. And this is good news that indeed causes great joy because it's not just a good news message for this season. It changes my state of being. It now means that I live in relationship and friendship with God. It has dealt with that barrier that existed between him and me. And therefore, it, it, it unearths what, I, what he created me to be in relationship with him as his son or daughter, as his child. Now, that doesn't mean that life is breezy. When we look through the rest of, the, of Jesus's life, it is not breezy. It doesn't mean that everything goes the way we would want it to. But it means that whatever external circumstances we face, we can have joy because we know that our life is not about what is around us. It is about our life with him. And notice as well that this news is good news and it will cause great joy and it will cause great joy for all the people. See, there, there are no boundaries, there are no limits to God's wonderful offer of salvation. There's no one who's too far away for him to reach. No, he came to us. It's not about how quickly or how well we can get back to him. No, God with us, Emmanuel. He came to us to show his love, his grace, his mercy, and to take all sin upon himself. And so whoever you are, uh, wherever you've come from, whatever your background, this news is good news for you. And Jesus invites you to come to receive his forgiveness. He wants to be your Savior, your Messiah, your Lord. M Margaret and Susan are going to come and sing again. And it's a wonderful retake on an old carol, uh, which helps to demonstrate this idea that this good news is for all the people. This is good news for all. So whoever you are, you're invited to come to know this child who was born, born to be the sacrifice in our place, and therefore dealing with sin totally so that we can know him as our Savior, our Messiah, our Lord. And therefore that leads to joy. That is joy. That is peace. That is what Christmas is really all about. Jesus, the true light that gives light to everyone, was coming into the world. Let's hear this wonderful piece and respond in our hearts.
to Susan and Margaret and Christine for um, singing that um, lovely song. Um, we're going to close up our service in just a moment, but before we do that, Christ is born for you, so come. And that's the, the offering that's given out this evening, that gift that of Jesus born is a gift for you this evening. If you haven't already accepted that, we would love for you to, to come this Christmas and accept that greatest gift of the Lord Jesus into your life to be the life and the light and the joy um, that he offers. So this evening is we're going to close in prayer and then we're going to sing another carol. Don't go off from this moment. Don't go away from this evening if you haven't considered that greatest gift that has been given for you and to come and put your trust in him as your Lord and Savior. I'm going to close in prayer. And then we're going to sing um, our final carol, Hark the Herald, and Andrew will um, dismiss us and tell us about everything else we need to know. Um, so I'm going to pray now, but maybe this is your opportunity if you do need to come to Jesus this, this evening to, to do that, wherever you're just where you're sitting, to come and give your life to him. Let's just pray and we'll wrap up our service there. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your son, the Lord Jesus, the greatest gift, the true light, who's come to give us light and the life and joy. Father, we thank you that he didn't just stay that baby that we picture at Christmas, but he came and he lived a perfect life and went to the cross to take the punishment for our sin. Father, I just pray that as we go away from this evening and enter into the, this Christmas season, that, Father, that we will remember the true reason for this season, and that is Jesus who was born for us, and that he is with us, He's there to help us. He's there to lead us and to guide us, to give us light and to give us life and to give us joy. Help us to focus on you um, this year at Christmas rather than all the, the lights and all the tinsel and all the presents and all the turkey. Help us to have a Christmas that is filled um, with you this year. So, Father, will you be with us as we um, depart in a few moments? And will you bless um, our our time with family and friends over the coming days and weeks. Bless our time together as a church over this Christmas period as well. And will you just really um, fill us with that sense of your presence as we uh, enjoy this Christmas time and, and step into a new year ahead. So, Father, we leave this all in your hands. We, we thank you for being with us this evening. And we pray you'll take us in your homes in safety. And we ask us all in your son's precious name. Amen. So let's stand and sing our last carol. And then Drew will dismiss us in a few minutes.
Uh, thank you so much uh, for joining with us as we've celebrated uh, the wonderful good news of Christmas. Uh, we pray that's been a blessing to you. Uh, just to let you know that in the new year, we're going to be exploring uh, more about the life of Jesus and what it means through a three-week evening course that we're doing on three Sunday evenings, the 9th, 16th, and 23rd. Uh, it's called Hope Explored, and if you'd like to join that or have more information about that, please do speak to me uh, or sign up through the website. That would be wonderful. But we look forward to seeing you again at some point, but we pray that you have a hopeful and joyful and uh, Christ-filled Christmas as you celebrate with your loved ones and closest. Uh, so thank you for joining with us. Uh, I'm going to play a video at the end, but that's sort of for background music, but also just to enjoy. Uh, it's again another retake on an old carol, um, but don't feel like you have to watch it. Um, but on your way out, sorry, I should have mentioned, uh, Karen has very kindly uh, made little gifts for us all. Uh, and so unfortunately, we can't hang around and have refreshments and uh, fill our bellies with mince pies and mulled wine, but we can uh, send you out with some. Uh, so please do take those uh, with, our, with our thanks for your uh, being here with us tonight. So thank you, and may you know God's blessing as you go from here. <laughs> 